happened that exemplifies Greg's friendship was while I was in Korea, our son, Sean, who was a senior in high school at the time, was really seriously injured in a kiteboarding accident. And uh, he got drugged through some mangrove and got slammed into a pier. And so Hope was actually on her way to Greg and Lori's house for dinner that day. And as she was getting to the house, she got the phone call from the hospital that Sean was there. And so she apologized that she couldn't stay and she needed to go. And, and Greg said, no, wait, I'm going to go with you. You don't need to go there alone. So he went with her to the hospital. So I didn't even find out about the accident for a couple of days because uh, I was in Korea. And I remember when I got the phone call, you know, I, all I could think about was like, you know, my son could have died and I wouldn't have been there. It was a really sobering uh, experience. When we got the word a few months ago about Greg's change in his condition, uh, and we saw the, uh, the messages from Lori about encouraging people to reach out and to let Greg know what he meant to them. I didn't do that for a lot of different reasons. Not because I didn't want to, but things just kind of got hectic. I was in the hospital for a little bit, and then we had had a trip planned, and it just seemed like dealing with Hope's mom, who's 90, and just a lot of things happened, and it just didn't happen. I just didn't get over there. We just didn't reach out. And uh, we were up in the mountains this past week, Tennessee and North Carolina, and uh, we got the word that, that he was not doing well. And we were at Dollywood, and I, I was in line with my daughter and grandson for a ride, and I just said, you know, I don't think Greg's going to be with us more than another, than another day or so, just the way things were sounding. And sure enough, that evening when we got back from Dollywood was when we got the word that, uh, that he had passed away. So we were in the car driving home, and uh, I was sitting in the back seat for a while. And I just, out of the blue, had these thoughts that started popping into my head about Greg. And so I wrote this little song for him. Didn't really have a name for it per se, and I just thought Requiem for a Friend fit it just as good as saying a song for Greg. But the gist of the song is about regret. <clears throat> regret in not saying or doing the things that we wished we would have done when we had the opportunity. I had a lot of regret that I didn't reach out to Greg in those final few weeks personally to see him or to write something or to say something. And once he was gone, the opportunity was gone. Um, so this song is a reflection of that thought and a reminder to us of how important it is to cherish the ones we love, to make the most of the moments that we have, and to not let time slip away from us. Because before we know it, the ones we love will slip away. Heard about the passing of a friend of mine Someone I hadn't seen in quite so I meant to see him when I heard the news He wasn't doing well, it wasn't looking good But time slipped by and before I knew My friend was gone, his battle finally through The chance to say goodbye had slipped away How I regret the things I never got to say Yes. 
younger days He held some records though he'd never say He loved to coach and he loved to lead A quiet man of courage and integrity Out on the water was his happy place Boating always put a smile on his face Making special memories with the ones he loved spent with us and we are never promised tomorrow we aren't even guaranteed today so hold the ones that you love even tighter and always take the time to say how much you love them each and every day cause before you I'm thankful that my friend knew God He walks with Jesus where the angels trod There's no more cancer, yes he's finally free Someday we'll get meet again, I truly do believe But for now we're left to carry on Honor his memory, live a life that's strong for others in their hour of need, love like Jesus loves unconditionally. Cause we are never promised tomorrow, we aren't even guaranteed today. So hold the ones that you love even tighter, and always take the time to say. How much you love them each and every day Cause before you know it They can slip away Yes, before we knew it You had slipped away Love us and our family has intersected with the Perry's family in lots of different ways including, apparently, uh, I just found out today, one of the um, best stories that one of my teenage daughters ever told to get out of a situation involved Lake. <laughs> apparently, you guys were talking about this this week. <laughs> and uh, just so many wonderful memories of the families together. I've been asked to read Lori's words, a uh, letter to Greg and to the family, and it's a real privilege to do so. I share this with you on behalf of Lori. To Greg, my husband, and my best friend, there are three words that come to mind about your life. Warrior, elevate, and legacy. Warrior. Greg, since you were a child playing hurt with your dad, Marty, and Lori, you were a fighter. You would always wrestle, and the first one to cry was out. You were the smallest, and you usually were the first one to cry. But this family game taught you to fight. As a champion wrestler, you were so modest that unless people were in the wrestling community, they never knew of your accomplishments. In fact, you never told me the extent of your success. I think simply because you just wanted me to love you for who you were, not what you did. You were not just a warrior on a wrestling mat, but you fought for everything worthy of honor. You fought for your children. You fought for your marriage. And you fought for anyone who didn't did not have the resources to fight for themselves. Your favorite quotes, you don't have to do it, you get to do it. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And never, never give up. You are a warrior in your battle with pancreatic cancer. It is said that only 7% of people that have this type of cancer live past the first year. After a year and a half of treatment, we celebrated a second year of clean scans and blood work. Then on June 15, the silent, aggressive, angry cancer reared its ugly head in your brain and spine. By July, the symptoms had become unbearably difficult. We thought we might have a few more weeks with you than we did, and your ultimate victory occurred when you went to be with Jesus on August 5, 2017. 
Grant, you were a warrior in this life, and you were a warrior as you passed from this life to our eternal resting place with our Lord Jesus. Elevate. Greg, everyone who was ever in your presence was elevated. As we did our morning devotion coffee, we read a book that described compassion and kindness as the language in heaven. You spoke the language of heaven right here on earth. You were the most compassionate and kind person I have ever met. Many times when you saw a person on the side of the road asking for help, you would drive to Wendy's and return with a meal. Even in the last three months when you were sick, you showed up to help two families move. Men you wrestled against, people you have done business with, the places where we served on mission trips to Haiti and Costa Rica, fishing 56, leading connect classes at ECCC, using our trailer for Halloween rides and birthday parties for Jesus at Brevard Rescue Mission, working with the homeless at Overlook, coaching at MIHS. Everyone loved you because you made them feel special. You made us all laugh, especially with that dog collarbone joke. You are known as a man who takes the high road in every situation. It's because of you that Becky, Lindsay's mom, and your ex-wife is one of my best friends. Legacy. Legacy shows up in the relationships you have had over time. Nothing points more to legacy than the Peary's family friendship with the Beals and Grams. Ed and Lyle, Bobby and Gretchen, who nurture families who have lived life together through three generations. Legacy shows up when your business customers from all over the world are writing and calling me, and in particularly Brad in Australia, who wrote to me to tell me that it was because of your, your expertise and guidance that his air conditioning business, business in Sydney is flourishing. Legacy showed up in the two other women in your life, your precious mother Gretchen, who prayed for you daily, and your 1960 47-foot yacht, Mary Ellen, who gave so many so much pleasure. Legacy shows up in a family who evacuates on a carnival cruise ship during the 2004 hurricanes, who got kicked off a Royal Caribbean cruise ship in Mexico in 2010 for minor offenses. I think we need to hear about that story later. Legacy shows up in the form of six wrestlers and coaches from your Mount St. Joe High School wrestling team traveling all over the country to visit you just days before you were gone. For five days, Louie, Harry, Smitty, Pete, Jay, and Rick cooked, ate crabs, laughed, told stories, and had many turtle encounters. Legacy shows up in your friendships, people like Dina and Rusty, Michael and Shannon, Tony and Renee, Kevin and Lisa and Tom, and so many others. Friends who have bathed our family in love and service during this most difficult time. Pastor Kevin, who has on many occasions dropped everything to be by our side. Dina and Shannon, who have anticipated my every need and who have caught every tear. A friend like Rusty, who has stepped up in so many ways as a father figure to all our children. A friend like Michael, who literally had to lift and carry Greg into a wheelchair and onto the airplane on August 1st, returning from our last appointment at the Cancer Treatment Center in Atlanta. Legacy shows up in the closeness of family, Marty and George, Aunt Karen, Jeff and Sherry, Cindy and Jay, dear Aunt Anne, and many nieces and nephews. Special times over the past few years that have strengthened the bonds of legacy. Legacy shows up in laughter, one thing people always comment about our family is how we are always laughing. Legacy shows up in your children and grandchildren. Greg wanted me to say these things to our children. To Rachel, you are very dear to my heart. I love you. I want you to know and be sure that you know we love you more than words can express. We are so grateful for the wife you are to Blake and the mother you are to Remy. You are an amazing person and we are so glad you are in our life. To Kyle, since Lindsay was little, we prayed for a man that would be worthy of love, of her love. We prayed for a man with honor and integrity. Little did we know that we were praying for a little boy who lived just down the road. Greg loves you very much and trusts you with his daughter and his newborn baby granddaughter, Harper. To Lindsay, Lindsay, firstborn daughter, you are precious in so many ways. During the past 10 days, we really saw what a nurse looks like. As you were nursing your sweet newborn baby, Harper, you were right in the middle of caring for Daddy. 
You had every detail under control in the middle of the most stressful time in our lives. Your kind and gentle ways were a reflection of who your daddy was. Words cannot express how much we love you and how much your loving care mattered in the most difficult time in daddy's life. To Blake. As daddy's only son, you have a special seat of honor. You have been a strong tower in the middle of many of life's challenges. At a very young age, you have taken on some amazing responsibilities. We are so proud of the husband and father you are becoming and of your service in the United States Coast Guard. Blake, you have wisdom, insight, and strength beyond your years. Take advantage of the men God has put in your life. Tenderly love the women in your life. Be happy doing what you love. You're the only boy remaining with the Perry name and all the siblings and cousins, so you and Rachel have some work to do. We need another boy. <laughs> And Blake, in the middle of being so strong, remember what Daddy taught you and the other wrestlers on your high school wrestling team. Real men cry. To Hannah. Hannah Bear. I'm so sorry, and yet I'm not, that you were here and saw how much pain I was in before Jesus took me to heaven. Baby girl, please know that you are never alone. I am so proud of you headed to the University of Florida on Monday. And now I do have season tickets at Gator football games, too, and I'll be right there with you. My baby girl, love your mom and spend time with her. Listen closely to what Lindsay and Rachel have to say. They are wise. Trust the inside of Blake and Kyle. Now they are the men in your life. And if none of that works, call Rusty. <laughs> Lexi shows up in your vision for a care cancer care ministry to help other families going through the insurmountable challenges of this illness brings. The way our friends have served our family is the vision for the way the cancer care ministry will serve others. Through this ministry, your legacy will far outlive your own battle. Finally, legacy showed up in your relationship with the Lord. Over and over, we marveled at the impeccable timing of each and every event in our life. Every, every time we saw a tiny miracle orchestrated by the presence of the Holy Spirit, you would tell me, write this down, write this one down. You recognized on a constant basis how God was working in details at this most difficult time in our life. During every part of this season, our theme was, no matter what happens, we trust you, Lord. Greg, our journeys were planned before time, and it amazes me that the wheels were set in motion for us to meet when I was 12 years old in the mountains of Colorado. I babysat for a musician family who 10 years later performed a concert at EP Church in Annapolis. I started going to EP Church, and I think I accidentally sat on the Peary Row bench. That's where it all began. When we first started dating, you actually asked permission to hold my hand. My dear Greg, loving you in this life has been my greatest joy. Creating legacy with you has been my greatest pleasure. Caring for you during your illness, especially when it became really difficult, has been my greatest honor. Great Perry, I am forever and will always be yours. Is that he loved God. We can stand confident and say, he loved God. We can, from all the testimony that we've heard in a court of law, he would be convicted today for loving God. And the second was that he loved others. You know, and if you look at the vision of our church, it says, love God, love the church, and love people. And, and he was the prime example of what that meant. Just, it was shared earlier, but just months ago, in the midst of, of all that Greg was going through, I put a call out on Facebook. I'm like, man, I need help. I've got an older couple, an elderly couple that I need to move, and it's me. <laughs> I need some help. I just put it on my Facebook page. Somebody help me. First person to answer was Greg and Lori. We'll be there. In the midst of all this, this was just months ago. Now, we, we have some cards and stuff that are laying around. He would want you to be a part of that ministry, whether it's with your time, any effort you could make to help people that are in the same position that they have found themselves in. There are hurting people all around us that are dealing with this. And his goal was to see that they would get care and that, that things would work out for them. We sat in my office and actually counseled with people. In the midst of his trials, he would sit there and reach out to them and share in the midst of his own battle.
this may take a minute, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it off here. Um, Greg Craig, one of the most loving and caring men I ever had the pleasure of knowing. Uh, Coach Perry led, led many of us through incredibly trying times, all the while teaching us many lifelong lessons along the way. His compassion was never ending, and his love for all those who knew spread wide like the horizon. Although I have been flooded with memories and emotions in the past few days, a uh, few things are blaring right from my eyes. Coach Perry had a way of infecting you with a soft, sweet, loving fire that would enrage whenever you needed the extra positive energy the most. Whether it be while doing push-ups or running sprints or live drills during practice, or when you come to a crossroads in your personal life, Coach always had a way of instilling you with strength and confidence and uh, put a smile on your face, and not only standing strong, but accomplishing any tasks that lay ahead. I can hear his high-pitched chuckle as he was round hilariously, inviting grin as if he were sitting right next to me. All I had to do was sneak up behind him with a heavy hand and a light technique in the room. And you let out a roaring laugh, and quickly square his hips, and take a side step or two, and gingerly hand fight with me until we both decided neither of us wanted to let it, excuse me, neither of us wanted his hair to get too out of alignment. <laughs> but, but he, <laughs> it was, it was good. The, the few little hairs he had there, they looked good. But, uh, but even in playful instances like that, his message and his teeth of teaching were eminent. If you were, oh, excuse me. How about that sunnies, guys? <laughs> um, his teachings were eminent. If you were to win, see with one muscle fiber in any type of attacking manner, that may have been the last time I ever tried to score two or, or one even on the most effective high school wrestler in the nation I've ever seen. But like many of you know, that was never his intent, never his intent to prove his greatness, or unfortunately for some to ever even speak of it. Um, he showed it. Not only not not just his technique or knowledge of his uh, knowledge of the sport, but his own unending love and care through his time spent bonding with our team and his supporting family members and supporters. Uh, see what he taught me was not how he could take me down and embarrass me with the ease he could have done so but the fact that he never did or he never had to. Coach Perry oper operated on a much deeper level with us all. His teachings were plentiful on the mat and in training, but what he taught us about compassion, loving each other and ourselves, and having the will, having the will willpower and inner strength to believe we can accomplish all things we strive to with integrity and class will be with us forever. He also knew the most helpful way to guide us through all situations, whatever that may be, and uh, for that, we'll, we'll forever be grateful. Uh, Westwell Coach, our leader, our friend, thank you for being such a bright and loving man. God bless you.